Hello Fern followers, another uh, little quick video here about uh, something asked, somebody asked me a few days ago and that is um, how do I tie my dog out? How do I let it burn excess energy? Here's a good girl. How do I burn my dog's excess energy? It's full of beans um, and what do I do to get rid of that energy? So let's think of it from a different angle. I, as well as everything else I do, I'm an endurance running coach and the aim of my job as a coach is to enable the, the people I train, the runners, to be able to run further and to run faster and at the same time use less energy. So imagine somebody comes to me on day one and I'm going to start coaching them, give them a training plan. I might want them to do 10 or 15 minutes just really easy running. And that 10 or 15 minutes really easy jogging, really, really slow, don't get out of breath, uh, take it nice and easy, might burn 50 calories. Um, because that person has never run properly in, in years, uh, they're very inefficient at running, they're very unfit, and it takes a lot of energy, so it takes 50 calories to run for 15 minutes. Now, if they do that every day for a year, then a year down the line, if they went and ran 15 minutes again, but very, very easy again, not getting out of breath, and not puffing and panting, just a nice easy jog, a year down the line, they're very more efficient at running. And so, where it used to cost them 50 calories, or they used to burn 50 calories, because they're so much more efficient a year down the line, and fitter, and able to run and more economical, it's perhaps only costing them now 25 calories. So if you think of that in terms of a dog, when you first get the dog, and you take it to do something, to take it for a walk, or let it off the lead and have a run, to burn energy, it's very inefficient to doing it because it's not used to doing it. And it might burn off 50 calories, for example, in that little walk. But the more and more you give the dog those walks, that exercise, those runs, the more efficient it's going to be. It's going to get fitter, it's going to get more economical, and it's going to burn less calories over time. So a year later, it might only burn 25 calories. So think about what the question was. How do I get my dog to burn more energy or use more energy because it's a bundle of energy? What you're actually doing by taking your dog for a run or a walk or out for exercise isn't burning energy or it is temporarily it's teaching your dog to be more efficient what you're doing is conditioning your dog to be a more efficient runner an endurance runner and it can go forever and ever and ever and burn less energy at the same time so the question of how do i get my dog to burn energy and uh, it's never tired it's never getting tired the more and more i walk it the more and more it needs walking is because you're coaching it to be a better runner the same way i coach my runners to be better runners what you should think instead is where the energy comes from in the first place. Now energy comes in mainly from food. So if your dog's got a surplus of energy, which more than likely isn't the case, it's just that they're a pup and they're full of beans, perhaps think about giving it less food in the first place so you don't have to burn that energy off. If it was a person and they have to burn off 1,000 calories a day, it would be far easier to give that person 1,000 calories less per day and they haven't got to worry about burning them off. Now, another sort of related issue or problem or, or thing with, with dogs and energy and calories is the food that we give them. Um, so these dogs are working Cocker Spaniels and because that's their breed. At the minute, they're not working dogs. They don't go out and, and go on shoots or they're not on a farm. And the, the, but their name is Working Cocker Spaniel. Now, if you had a Working Cocker Spaniel, or a Labrador, or a Hunt Point Retrieve dog, or a, a Collie dog, or a German Shepherd, or something like that that's got a purpose, that's classed as a working dog, and you were wondering what food to give it, on the bags of food, on the labels, it would have suitable for a working dog. And then underneath it's got a list of breeds, so Working Cocker Spaniel, Springer Spaniel, Labrador, Bimarana, Bizzler, um, Labrador, whatever it may be. 
don't fall into the illusion that because your dog's breed is on that packet, that that food is suitable for your dog. Because that's suitable for those dogs in working conditions. That food is an excess of calories, loads more carbohydrates than in a standard food, to enable those dogs to go running around a farm all day, or running around a, a, a grouse shoot all day, or to round up sheep all day, or wherever it may be. So just because your dog's listed on there, if your dog isn't listed, if your dog isn't working, then it doesn't need working dog food. It just needs standard dog food, and that could be the issue. And then you go into a case of on the packet it says you must have 225 grams of food three times per day. Don't fall into the habit of because it says that on the packet that that's what you should give your dog. Because if today you haven't got enough time to walk your dog or take your dog out for exercise or anything like that, then it's not going to need as much energy to get it through the day to maintain its shape and its condition and its weight than it will do. If tomorrow, for example, you are walking in the hills for eight hours. So the best way to gauge how much food you, you should have is find the, the breed standards for your dog, what it should ideally look like, and try and maintain it to that. And if it's putting a bit of weight on, then the easiest thing to do is reduce the food. But another thing you can do is give it more exercise. But don't forget, giving more exercise in the long run teaches it to be more efficient and to burn less calories or less energy. Um, so that's that's something that quite a few people fall into the, the habit of doing with uh, with dogs, with energy, with calories, with with burning off. Um, I hope that makes sense. Think of yourself as a coach. If you're going to be taking your dog out, running it around the fields, you're conditioning it to be better. Now, what the very very best thing to do if your dogs are of a working breed or, or their breed was bred originally for a purpose it's in their instinct to do that purpose so you can run a dog around the field all day long and it won't be that tired it'll be physically tired but after a while it'll, it'll get up and, you know, and be back to normal it'll be crackers jumping around you and you'll be back to this square one what we want to do these dogs are bred to run around hunting in the grass or the, the bushes or the bracken or wherever it may be and then uh, flush game into the air, the game gets shot and then they go and retrieve it and bring it back. That's their job, that's what they're for. So if you can teach them that and you can get them playing games involved in hunting, involved in retrieving, then they're not only running around fields, they're using the brains. So if you can give them physical exercise and mental exercise along the lines of what they were bred for, then that is what's going to wear them out. They're going to have to use the brains. They're going to work um, and they're not just getting running around fields becoming better athletes, becoming better endurance runners. The brain's getting tasked and that is, is going to mentally tie them out. And then this is the result. I've just been doing a little bit of work with those dogs. They only think it's fun, but look how mentally tasked they were. We haven't left the garden, so they haven't had loads of physical exercise, but they've had mental exercise. So that's how, if your dog has too much energy, you, you solve the issue. So. You can look at giving them the most appropriate food, so it doesn't have to be working dog food. You can look at giving them the appropriate portion size or the appropriate portion frequency. So instead of four times a day, it might be three times a day. Instead of um, 225 grams, it might be 225 grams minus a little bit because they haven't done any exercise today. It might be plus a little bit because they've done some more, they're gonna do a lot more tomorrow. So rather than go off the bag and um, just, just be a sheep and, and put what it says. Use your eyes, use your hands. Can you feel the ribs? Can you feel the spine? Can you feel the, the knee joints? And um, adjust everything every day based on that. Sometimes these dogs get fed absolutely loads. This one, at 14 weeks, eats more than this one at 10 months. And that's because at the moment I'm taxing her brain constantly with little games and little um, drills that she's She's getting taught and her brain is constantly learning all of the time. She's been exposed to different um, stimulus and uh, environments and, and games and uh, drills and it's taxing her. And she's, even though she's only that big and she's only tried to put a few hundred grams on in the six weeks of her paddock, she is um, burning or using more energy, more food, more calories 
and the bigger one. So don't think based on size, don't think based on breed, don't think uh, based on what the packet says, based on their condition. Do they meet the breed standard? Are they heavier than the breed standard? Are they thicker than the breed standard? Are they, are they, are they losing the ribs? Or is it the opposite? In which case you need to adjust portion size, adjust food type, adjust portion frequency, and play around with it and, until you can maintain them in that shape. That way, you'll probably um, have the, the far better results and you won't be having to question how they'll burn energy off. And the question is, you don't, uh, the answer is you don't put the energy there in the first place, or the surplus of energy there. And if it is there, exercise them physically and mentally rather than just physically, because physically, you're teaching them to be better at withstanding that exercise. So I hope that helps. Uh, I'll try and film a few more as questions come in, and we'll do another one soon.